So after all the testing and after all the assembly, I'm taking it apart again. <clears throat> this time I'm going to um, do the final, uh, do the final basically. Um, I'm going to take it all apart. I'm going to uh, paint the, all the brass and the copper pieces that you see. I uh, got the valves out, got it all cleaned up, <laughs> got the tons of oil that are that's just everywhere. Me and hydraulic fluid don't mix. We uh, we always fight, and the hydraulic fluid wins. So between uh, a ton of hydraulic fluid on the excavator, a ton of it in the tracks, a ton of it on the floor, a ton of it on that, a ton of it on that, a ton of it right there. I got it all taken apart. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, the next time after, um, after I get it apart, I'm going to paint it. I got some self etching primer here. Uh, I got some, um, uh, some Krylon fusion gray, uh, paint. This is, uh, satin and I know the tractor is glossy, but, and it's a little bit of a different color, but a little bit lighter, but this is the closest I can get it. So, yeah, after I do that, it's going to uh, going to be done. I got all the electronics on this nasty plate here that's full of electronics all put together. Let me unplug this, doing some servo testing. Um, going to take the tank off and paint it just because I don't want it to rust. Uh, it's not because I'm trying to make it look good. I just really don't want it to rust. You're never going to see it. Um, and again, like I said, all this is a mess right now, but the next time you see it, I'm going to... Uh, uh, put start putting it back together and we'll show you how it looks when it's done okay guys be back in a bit so earlier in the video uh, I told you guys that uh, if I remember right that um, this wasn't painted or anything like that I I think I showed you um, uh, the, the paint that I was using and the color. Like I said, I used this uh, smoke gray uh, from Krylon. And, I mean, yeah, Krylon. And it, it came out pretty good. I mean, it's a, it's a mild difference. You actually see it better in the video camera than you do in real life. It's kind of scary how that works, but it's not as blue as the uh, video is saying showing it is but anyway i got all the hard lines in got them all painted got everything all hooked up um that, like i said again this is going to be a quick connect and i might redo them so they bend this way instead of coming down that way because as you can tell i've been digging with it and uh just to see if it works and this gets all in the dirt so that's not good um this is how it all turned out. This is, um, it looks heavy, still heavy. Um, like I said, this is the tank. It's actually a bigger tank than what I originally started out with. Again, here's the, the uh, three speed, uh, three speed controllers. The one for the uh, brushless is, uh, for the pump is under here. It's a brushless speed controller. And this speed controller is actually giving me some problems. I might just have to go run over to the hobby shop uh, this weekend and get a, a better speed controller. This was a um, e uh, eBay. This was an Amazon special. I usually don't have any problems with the uh, the little airplane um, brushless uh, brushless speed controllers I get off of Amazon, but this one is giving me a little bit of problems. Um, again. Here's how the pump is hooked up. And it does, I'm kind of sorry about how the messy it looks. It's not as messy as, as it might come off on in the camera. I mean, all the wires, they go to their point. They all go to this, uh, to this BEC here, which I actually might change this to the more traditional style BEC. Um, this one being for a being for a drone um i wasn't aware of some of the stuff that it does that i guess are really uh more drone like for some for one reason uh one thing the two track motors 
they're offset. And I can't seem to get the radio to understand that they're not connected. So when I try to go forward with this track, this track goes backwards and vice versa. So I need to um, need to figure that out and uh, get that taken care of. And I think it has to do with the BEC because I know with drones, it, it's a little different with the with the way that the motors work and all that stuff. I don't know. So I'm going to go to the more traditional BEC. That's what this is here. Um, let me uh, take them out the package for you. Okay. I got the BEC out of the package. And what a BEC does for people who don't know, basically what happens is your speed controllers will run your receiver. But in this case, I can't have this speed controller trying to run to uh, power the receiver, this speed controller trying to power the receiver, this speed controller trying to power the receiver, and this speed controller down here trying to power the receiver. That will overpower the receiver and basically it'll burn it out so what you have to do is take the power wire out of the plug that's what this little red wire is that represents the positive um you unplug that from your j your um your uh, j connectors i guess they call and that will allow the speed controller to still run like a speed controller but it doesn't supply power so now that there's no power going to the the receiver from the speed controller, you need something like a BEC that's basically a voltage regulator that will send power to your receiver. And that's what this little guy is. And that's what that thing is. This is a little bit more advanced because it has all this uh, voltage regulator circuitry in it. And it has these... Um, um, Oh, I cannot think of the name of this little setup here. But basically, you can put all your wires into here, and they will go to your uh, your receiver, and it's not this big ball of uh, solder where you're trying to connect all the wires. Now, you can do this. It's called a bus board. <laughs> I just about to say bus bar, but this is called a bus board. Uh, you can do the same thing with a little bus bar where all your wires will go into the bus bar and they break off, which I might actually have to go to. Um, that way, you know, this is, like I said, this is really made for a drone and it's doing some funky things and I don't know how to fix it. So I might just go back to just the basic BEC, which is tiny in comparison. So that would give me some more room under the... Uh, under the cab of uh, well under the body of the uh, excavator but this is this is how it came out as far as mechanically now problems that i had doing this um i had a tank problem and i for the life of me don't understand what i was doing wrong with a tank tank is just a box that holds oil you know at least that's what i thought but there's there's some stuff going on inside tanks that I don't understand. Well, this is a new tank. It's bigger. Um, here's one of the older tanks that I made. This one, see, is half the size. And this one was doing a thing where the, um, the oil that was coming out was foaming. So it made everything, it made everything in the... Uh, in the excavator, all the movements just lock up. So that was no good. So I made this one. So I made this guy here that it worked, but when the uh, return, when the, uh, the bypass valve was working, again, it started foaming up the oil. And I, again, I don't know what, why it was or Somebody can probably explain it to me in comments, and I would greatly appreciate it. That way I would never have that problem again. But this one wasn't working. So after sitting down and just thinking about it for a little bit and going back to what I – instead, uh, well, instead of trying to do something fancy like I was going on with here with the the uh, return for the, the, the bypass and the return and all that – 
I just went back to the basic old everyday way I've, I've always did uh, tanks. And this one works fine. This works great. The excavator itself works awesome. Give me a second and I'll turn it on. I want to make this kind of quick because, you know, I want to make a part four. What is the thing you use since Okay, now I can show you how how it works and everything working right. Here's the uh, the house, of course. And excuse the battery just flopping around, but the body holds it in place. The, the house works, of course. Like I said, the tracks, uh, right now they don't want to work. <laughs> but they want to embarrass me. But the tracks are hooked up. And, of course, the pump. And this is the problem I was telling you. When I feed up the pump, it does that. And I think that's, I know it's not the pump. To me, I think it's the uh, speed controller. But anyway, you don't want to go that high in, in RPMs anyway. But, of course, the arm, I mean the stick, the boom. Okay, and then you got the bucket. And of course, it'll pick it up. So it's strong enough to pick up the excavator, and it's still strong enough to uh, it's still strong enough to drag itself around. So, and of course, got the lights, and I added I added these this light here and that light right there because I know in my uh, in my review. I said that they didn't give you a light that was aiming towards the bucket. So if you're digging at night, and and I do because I get home from work around about uh, around about 4:30 or so. So it's getting stark by the time I get get out, um, make dinner, take a shower, get all cleaned up. It's dark outside, so I just want to go out in the front yard and and uh, play with the excavator a little bit in the little flower bed that we have. And I can't see, so I I actually use my lights. I use all my lights on all my vehicles. Um, so, but yeah, that's part three. And uh, when I get to part four, I'll have everything all put together, and it'll give you the final uh, my final opinion on it. And again, I want to say something about what I did and the pros and cons of what I did. The uh, pros to it to make it quick and easy is um, it gives you more, the hydraulics give you more options. Um, as far as attachments go and things that you can you can buy for it and uh, things you can do with it, the hydraulic systems give you more options. That was the main reason why, one of the main reasons why I did it. The other reason was because I just wanted to do something for the channel. But that's one of the main reasons why I went to, to make it hydraulic. Now, the cons to it was it's not a hard install to put the hydraulics in this. It's really, you're just replacing the gear-powered stuff and the electronics with, um, with uh, you know, just regular RC stuff and hydraulic systems. Now, that being said, I would use, in retrospect... And I'm not going to go back and rebuy another valve set, but I wouldn't use the valves that use standard size uh, uh, servos. I would go to a valve set that uses the uh, nine the nine G servos or the nine gram servos, just because of uh, just because of space. Um, the other thing is too, this guy again, it works great electric matter of fact i'm actually really thinking about buying another one and just leaving that one electric you know um 
You know, this guy, he's getting really long in the tooth and he's starting to get really old. And the parts that I use to make it, because like I said before, this one is completely custom. And the stuff that I use to make it, a lot of it is no, no longer available anymore. So I don't know what I want to do with it yet. And it has a turntable problem and the uh, the wire slew ring is uh, basically falling apart on, on itself over because of the years and years of oil spilling on it, dirt and just wear and tear. And for a while it sat, it lived on the back porch. Um, it just, it, it needs to be retired. So what I'm thinking about doing is taking all the components out of it, all the stuff that I can use, like the pump, the valves and some of the other stuff, some of the electronics and just cleaning up and put it on the shelf and, just letting it live the rest of his days out on the shelf. So that's why I'm thinking about getting another one. And model size wise, I like this size excavator. This is a perfect size excavator for the type of, um, you know, the type of scenarios that I like to do when I'm, when I'm playing. I'm not, you know, usually when I'm out there playing or set up a little scene or do something like that, it's usually replicating, you know, just like just like work that you see the city of, like I live in Oldsmar. It's a town in, in Florida, but it's kind of like the work you see in old, that people do on the side of the road at Oldsmar, putting in a new pipe or, you know, um, installing whatever underground or something. So you never see the huge, you know, the big mining size excavators or the big ones like this guy. Cause that guy is not a small excavator. Uh, but you don't never see anything that big. And even, sadly, that dump truck. I'm actually thinking about selling that dump truck and getting a different one. Because, to me, it's too big for what I do. But, eh, whatever. Um, that's a different story and a different video. Well, that's my uh, excavator conversion. And the next video, we'll have it. I have everything worked out, all buttoned up, and it show you finally how it, the final product and how it came out but right now there's i don't think there's anything more mechanical that i can do with this i know in my next video one of the things i'm going to have installed i ordered a, a quick uh connect from a company called Warbox um for the bucket and i also ordered a shield for the um for this cylinder here so those are being installed and we can show you, give you that. And also, I'm thinking about painting the tracks because believe it or not, those are painted. They're not, uh, I thought from the factory that they were, they just left them the, uh, the color of the metal. But no, they're actually painted silver, which is a great idea because when they get scratched up, they, you can't see it. But I was actually thinking about painting those black. But again, that's in a different video. Uh, Hope you guys like what I'm doing so far. See you next time.